Continuous delivery and beyond. So yeah, so there will be talk about delivery, not deployment. Um, so we are not on the on that stage in SciencePress yet. Um, the speech title is continuous delivery and beyond, and hopefully by the end of the talk we'll understand a little bit more about the beyond. Um, but before I start, um, there's one concept that I, I want to talk to you about, and it's called a creative constraints. Sorry, um, and it's 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 basically about making sh setting up some constraints for whatever you do to make sure that 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 one thing that you want to do, you will do it the best. So in, instead of saying, okay, I will use whatever tool I want, I will use whatever language I want, when you constrain yourself, uh, you, it will make your project better. Um, and one of um, exercises um, to sort of play with it is the seven words challenge, where you have to describe yourself with, with seven words. And um, I chose choose, um, creative pragmatic, pragmatic engineer sketcher, dad, and a husband. Um, and if there is one thing I would like to take home from this talk is this creative constraints thing. It really, really applies to not only IT, but like to really, really multiple things. And it helps a lot in IT. Um, cool. Um, engineers um, almost unable to say good things about other engineers. Um, I don't know why, uh, but if, if, if someone made a, a good software or whatever, like you don't go to him and say, right, well done, gr great job. Um, and that's why, but if something goes wrong, or if, it's, or, or if it's slow or it doesn't work, we're the first one to um, complain. So if, if whatever you did is, is working and people are using it, but not talking about it, great job. It means it does work and it does what it meant to do. Um, so yeah, so the best thing you can, you can sort of get is absolutely no feedback. <laughs> nor good, nor bad. Um, before I go further, um, how, by the show of hands, how many of you are using IWS um, at work? on production. Cool. Um, so for those who don't, I will explain a few, uh, few, few things um, during the talk. Um, are there any Ansible users? Three. <laughs> um, did anyone heard about Go CD? Two. Okie doke. Um, Elastic and the Elk stack? Right, and Datadog, that's a bit niche, but yeah, we've got one hand. Um, cool, so um, basically, that's the foundation for, for most of the projects we've got in Sainsbury's world, the, the project that I, I'm involved with. And um, they do the trick. Um, we can build fast, we can fail fast if we have to, and they simply work. Cool, so quick background. Um, so right now we've got a team of six platform developers. Um, we support around 25 to 30 developers. Um, they are all spread across five development teams. Um, they've produced 30-ish microservices, which we support and deploy. Um, and we are mainly based, we, 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 we're mainly using PHP, Golang, and Python. Um, it didn't look like that before, so almost two years back, um, there was just me, and my manager said, why well, we've got six to nine months to go live with this pretty um, important project for Science Breeze. Um, here's the IWS account, go. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so I thought, right, don't panic, and the first thing I, I've set up is those limitations, those um, creative constraints. And I thought about like, what, 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 what are the things that I don't want to be involved with? Like what are the things that I don't want to do? And the first thing that comes to your mind is obviously rollbacks. 
you do not want to be involved in rollbacks whatsoever. Um, because they're boring, because they, they just, you just don't want to be involved in that. Um, but what, what that also means is you want to make sure that those happens automatically. Um, that it, not, it, it is not only a code rollback, but it's also an infrastructure rollback if something blows up. Um, you want to make sure that if a developer pushes a P0 bug by mistake to, to, to production, they can roll back themselves. Um, so it's not just saying, okay, we've got no rollbacks because I don't care about them. It's saying, okay, how do I do it so I'm not physically involved in it, but it will happen anyway, um, which is a big thing. It's, 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 not, it's not that easy. Um, and if I don't want to be involved in rollbacks, why should I be involved in releases? Um, it's, unless it's my code that's being uh, pushed, but um, other than that, um, you don't want to be involved in, in, um, in, uh, in the release. Which also means you want to make sure that the tools you, you build and gave to developers are rock solid, that they can, with full confidence, push to each environment and they will know what they're pushing and so and so on. And, and so and so on. Um, application configuration, yeah, that's, that's something that many developers got this idea of a DevOps, uh, that here's a guy that knows every single language and every, sing every, single, every single configuration of every single um, library and framework and pretty much the whole internet. Um, well, that's not true. Um, the developers need to own the application, the application configuration. That's why I do not want to be involved in that, which means I have to make sure that whatever we do, we give the tools to developers to make sure that they can test those configurations, they can play locally on the server that looks and works exactly the same as the one on production. Um, that's the key thing. Logs of all sorts, yeah. So I mean, so that's pretty simple. Um, just get Elk stack and put all the logs in Elk stack. What? Almost. Uh, logs are not only for, for 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 developers. You have to think about product owners. They want to see some numbers. They want to see right how many users are buying stuff, how many users are logging in, how many users are uh, viewing errors or sorry seeing errors, and so on and so on. Um, so you have to think about that and make sure that whatever you design um, can deliver that. Not only the raw logs for, the devel for developers, but only something else for the non-tech uh, people in your team. And all the other boring things. Um, and again, it, that, that can be different from project to project, from team to team. It could be something like, can you turn on the development mode on integration environment? Like, no, I can't. You've got a button to, to push. Like, do it yourself. Um, these are the small things that you have to think up, that they have to think about up front and make sure that whatever you design will allow you to automate that and just give control to your team. Um, and once you, once you do it, they can do whatever they want, or almost whatever they want. Um, and the whole reason for that is I, I don't want to be stressed at work. I, I want to <laughs> I want to enjoy those eight hours. Like I want to come to, to I want to wake up every day and say, okay, I, yes, I have to go to work, but at least I will do something that I like, and it's not painful, and I can enjoy it. Um, but that's 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 not enough. That's um, that only solves a, a part of the problem, because you still have to know how to do it. Um, And there are a few things like m mindset changes almost. Um, that's, where the, that's where the whole DevOps buzzword comes in. Um, if, you, if your background is ops, um, then this will be something very, very hard to swallow for you. Um, but that's the only way to go forward. You have to trust your developers. You have, to, you have to sort of switch your mindset to the single truth that they own that, 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 that service. 
from code through configuration to support. If you give them proper tools, they will be able to wake up in 2 a.m. and say, okay, it's failing because of this or this, because I had the same issue on my local VM yesterday. So, um, so you have to make sure that you work with developers, not against them. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, and, the, and, and developers own the service all the way to, 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 to production. Um, and again, you have to help them. You have to build those tools to allow them to do it. They have to be able to spin up a local vagrant box that is exactly the same as the production environment. Um, and, and again, without that, developers will not go along. But if you give them the tools, educate them a little bit, show them, okay, this is the syslog, this is the nginx logs, these are your PHP logs. If that happens, you do this. You do it once, twice, five times, but after that, they are developers. I mean, they, they are technical people. They, they will go along and, 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 and they will own the service. Because, um, and again, most, most of the time they do want to own the service. So it's just, it's just a c case of giving them uh, proper tools. <coughs> um, now we sort of switch to the um, CD things. Frequent and atomic releases. Um, atomic is, is, is quite important here as well. Um, release is not just a code drop. Release is your whole infrastructure release. Um, so if you've got a service, it's not just that PHP code or Golang code or whatever, but it's also a security groups, it's also load balancers, it's, it's, it's disks for, the, for, those, um, for those boxes. It's the whole thing. And if the only, the only way to, to deploy it is to deploy it all together. So if you have to roll back, you can roll, roll, roll it back all together. Um, AMI and, uh, and auto healing. AMI is a it's a Amazon machine image, and you can think about it as as a VM snapshot, um, which pretty much pretty much um, allows you to build up the 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 VM upfront, install everything you you want it to be there, including the the, the code in the correct version. You snapshot it, and then you can start exactly that version on any environment you want. Um, which gives you a great deal of um, assurance that if something works on development environment or, in, or, or staging environment, it will work on production because it's the same box. It's the same infrastructure. Um, so the only thing that could cause some problems is database or some, some stateful <coughs> something, either Elastic or, 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 or SQL or anything else. But in terms of co in in terms of service, always think about it as as the whole as the whole thing. Um, and yeah, code and infrastructure deployment and rollbacks, um, which again is for for some it's a it's 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 a big mind mindset change because most of the people I work with are used to okay let's just zip up the folder or just check it out on different folder change the sim links restart the server job done. The, um, the deployment finished. No, it's it's not that simple. You have to make sure that when you roll back, you can roll back with PHP any. You can roll back with firewall rules. You can roll back with this and that. So it's 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 never ever gonna be just code. Um, and again, to make it all work, you have to have an identical environments. Um, and I mean identical. Um, if, if your database for API XYZ is, if it needs a database, um, and, it's un and then that database is, let's say, available on API underscore XYZ dot Postgres dot DB dot int for internal, then the same URL is used on every single environment. There is no distinct, there are, there are no changes, there are, there are no differences between those environments. Otherwise, otherwise, developers will sniff that and start putting, if dot dev in the URL, do this or do that, and and, and that just opens opens the 
open the doors to all kinds of wrong, wrong things that can, that, that can happen. So always make sure that if you want to do the continuous delivery properly, every single environment needs to be identical. Now the only difference could be in the amount of boxes that run your service. But other than that, it's the same auto-scaling groups, it's the same s configuration settings and so on and so on. Um, Stack per microservice, that's about a, so IWS got this concept of um, cloud formation. And the cloud formation is, is, is a, is something that allows you to describe your infrastructure in a YAML file. So you can say, um, my service is a VM, is a load balancer, sorry, not VM, is a load balancer, auto scaling group that will make sure that X amount of boxes are running, and some security layer and maybe database. And once you've got that in that in your CloudFormation file, you, you run it, you start it, and then IWS builds that for you. The same way every single time. Um, which again, it's, it's allows you to make sure that every single en en environment is the same. And all your services has to be immutable and have no state. Because um, as soon as your, your, your service saves an you know, session on the disk, you can't go anywhere with that. Like, you, your, every single service n needs to be replaceable at any point. Um, the other thing to about the, the other thing to sort of remember about IWS is IWS is very hostile environment. Any box can die at any point in time. As soon as you sort of make, you, 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 you set yourself in that mindset, you will start thinking about things differently and you, you make sure that, okay, that box can die at any point. I don't care because the state is kept somewhere else. Um, when I do a release, again, I don't care. I can just kill half of those boxes, start new ones, re um, replace in the load balancer, job done. Um, and the most important thing is, yeah, the, the DevOps team in the whole process of continuous delivery, we just own the tools. We, we build the tools for developers, for product owners, and, and that's it. The whole continuous delivery itself happens after that. It's when the tools you've built are good enough for developers to pick them and use them. That's when the continuous delivery happens. It's not the, the DevOps or, or, or the, the ops guys doing the delivery, um, doing the, con the continuous delivery is the, the team. Um, so you, you have to sort of make sure that it's not you who will be doing the releases or rollbacks, but you have to make sure that the tools that you build for, the, for your team will allow them to do all, all those nice things. Um, okay, some, some quick stats. Um, so that's, these are the stats from one of the teams. Um, again, uh, week, that's uh, weekly stats. Um, continuous builds, so every, um, every passing CI test is triggering the, the build of a, of a new, new image of new AMI. And that AMI is, being, and that AMI is deployed automatically to, a, to, sorry, to, um, um, to our dev environment. And we've got roughly 180-ish a week um, uh, deployments. <coughs> a fraction of that, 40-ish uh, percent, uh, gets deployed to staging environment. Um, that's manual deployment, so developers um, every now and then will say, okay, um, I'm happy with that version, it's working on my phone, it's working on, 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 on a laptop, let's push it to staging and let's go to product owner um, and, and the QAs. And then again, a fraction of these will be actually pushed to production. Um, so we had two releases a day, that's pretty good. Um, but that's just numbers. Um, and 
I think the more more interesting thing is how to uh, how to enable developers to actually push that quickly and um, how to make them how to make them want to push that quickly. Um, so that's that's um, a, a slice of a dashboard that that I've built for for um, for for developers, and it's pretty much you, you read it from right to left. Um, so this is an example for um, API Shopper, uh, whatever it is, it, it doesn't really matter. But you can see that um, there is a one commit on staging environment that is good to go to production. Um, so morning stand up, we can go to, um, that's Matt, we can go to Matt and say, Matt, can we push that to production? Um, can we make a room for something else to go to, to, uh, to, to staging? Um, and Matt will say, yeah, let me just have a chat with, 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 with PO. And after stand up, let's say an hour after that, that goes to production. Uh, after that, um, Seb can say, okay, I'm happy with that version. I've tested it on my phone, whatever. I can push it to, to staging and then have a chat with PO and maybe push to production the same day. And then after that, you've got the list of pull requests so then in, during the morning, um, the whole team can decide, okay, which of these three, because that one is not mergeable, uh, which of these three should we review next? Um, and then once, once they've got these tools, they can repeat that every single day. And every single day in the morning say, okay, there is, let's say, nothing in, in, in staging, let's push something there. Let's make sure that we, we've got three pull requests, let's merge it quickly push it to staging, review it, and, pu and, and then push it to prod. Yeah. Um, so so uh, that's just, um, um, so GST is um, grocery service team, um, and ISSA is, um, is uh, smart shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, so, and uh, again, all, all those little things, like, as long as developers make sure that the, the, the commit message starts with square brackets, Jira ID, we can then automate lots of things. We can generate emails and, and, and so on and so on. So again, it, it works it work both ways. Developers do something for us, we do something for them. Um, I mean, it is, it is that simple, it, it really is. Um, 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 yeah, so that's, 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 that's one of the tools. And it really, really works. Um, so that started almost two years ago, and then yesterday or today, sorry, today, <laughs> um, it's still in. It's 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 still being used. Um, so during the morning stand up, they would just go, okay, bang, bang, bang. Everyone knows what to do. Let's just do it. Um, and that allows them to push at least twice a day. Um, the, the, the reason why there is only one commit in, uh, in each environment is, is pretty simple. It's much easier to debug a single change than multiple changes. Um, and the, there, is, there, there are no constraints on that. If they want, they can push two, three, five, ten commits. I, 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 I don't care. Um, but it will be that harder to debug if something goes wrong. Um, and that's, 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 that's another dashboard. So um, on IWS, our dev environment goes down every six or seven-ish PM. And then around 8 AM, it starts back up. And that was, that, that was a screenshot from around 8.45-ish, then five minutes later, and then 9 AM, everything was back to, um, back to green. Um, if something goes wrong, if, if we've got any emails about any incident or whatever, developers, that's the first thing they go to. Just make sure if, if the health check of every single service is, is, is fine and, 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 and green. Um, and again, that would not be possible if developers did not implement slash health check URL at every single um, service. So, so again, it's, 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 it's that give and take uh, um, thing where that dashboard will be as good as your health checks. Simple as that. If your health check will return always to 200, well, it will be always green. 
but if you actually check if you can talk to database, if you can write to disk and, and, and so on and so on, this will be much, this will be meaningful. Um, and I think right now they, they're pretty good with that right now because um, they know that um, if something goes wrong, they want to know about it as soon as possible. Um, and also, if, if something goes wrong, our platform would just kill the box that is not returning 200 for the health check and just replace it with a new one. Um, the other thing that allowed us to deliver that in the, those six to nine months is, is, is Ansible. Um, and the reason for that is Ansible is simple. It's simple to understand. Uh, it's, it's complex behind the scenes, but it's very, very easy for us to explain to developers, okay, this is your role for your service. This is what, I, this is what we're doing to install your application. Are those steps correct or not? And if they're not, go and change that. Um, so that allowed us to shift that responsibility slowly to, 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 to developers and allow them to control how we build the services, how we build those black boxes, with, which talks HTTP over port 80 or whatever. Um, like from our point of view, we don't care what's there and how it's being installed and how it's being run. We trust them we, with the tools they're using. And, but we, we always review the pull requests, um, but we sort of make sure that they can build those environments. And again, we can, with, with Ansible, we can build the, the AMI or we can build locally on, um, on a Vagrant. So the, 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 the developers can work on the latest and newest and the shiniest version of a service locally. Um, and then we, we use the same Ansible language, the, the same Ansible repo for deployments, for maintenance, and for platform uh, provisioning. And having just one tool is very, very useful. I mean, very useful. It's, it's very, very easy because uh, you don't have to remember all these kinds of things. Once you, once you understand the, the how, once you understand how it works, it, it gets really, really simple and it just um, allows you to, to, to do your work m much, much quicker. Um, go check out our, um, our um, Ansible roles on Galaxy. Um, uh, it's called Sansible. Uh, we've got quite a few and it's growing and we're always open for, on, uh, for pull requests, issues and so on and so on. We're happy to fix them and, 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 um, and pull requests are welcome. Um, the one thing that I have to warn you about is we are very, very religious about naming conventions and um, the way everything is set up. Um, so please take a moment and check how, how the role looks and works because otherwise there will be a lot of comments and, <laughs> and um, rejects. Um, but yeah, all, everything is tested um, in Travis and, and every single role is uh, indempotent. So that gives you the nice warm feeling that when you run your playbook on a already configured box, you'll get no zero changes, just okays um, and no fails, um, which is always good. Um, yeah, so cloud formation. If, if uh, I'm not sure if I should be talking about that too much. How how many people are interested in in knowing more about cloud formation? How how by show of hands, who will be um, willing to try it or to play with it? Uh, cool, all right, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing some, some, <laughs> some not so happy faces, but yeah. Um, so cloud formation. Um, the best thing about cloud formation is its managed state and access. Um, so once you s build your service, your your application, IWS will a DNS entry. It will know that there is a load balancer and 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 so on and so on. It will also know if someone else is not trying to modify it at the same time that you're trying to modify the same um, stack, uh, which is pretty, pretty useful. Um, it has automatic rollbacks. So if for whatever reasons, if anything will 
breaks, go wrong, or you've got some misconfiguration in your cloud formation, it will just roll back. It will say, failed, error, rolling back. And it will go back to the last known successful state. Um, it has chain sets. Um, so you can actually see what will happen if you apply this, um, this new version of your cloud formation, um, which is again really, really handy if, if, if you've got a, a, a service that you didn't touch for six months and you're really, really scared about up updating that because you just don't know what will happen. So you can just, you can just sim simply check. Um, it has enterprise support uh, from IWS and it's, it's finally YAML. So it's, it's not nice, readable templates. Um, and if you do it right, CloudFormation can save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. Really, really, really. So if, you, if, if you're starting your project and, and you've got, you could go with CloudFormation and you are on IWS and, and IWS only, please go with CloudFormation. It really, really pays off. Um, Mainly, again, mainly because it is made by those, by the same developers that build IWS. You know, they they know how the things, how all those things works together. So it's really, really, really powerful tool. Um, the Go CD, the Go CD is, is something like Jenkins. Um, who heard about Jenkins? Yeah, everyone. Yeah. So Jenkins is made for tasks. Go CD is made for pipelines. That's the main reason. There's, you can't compare those two together. You can, you can sort of massage Jenkins a little bit to make it look like it supports pipeline, but it's not. It's, it's tasks, and it's tasks driven. Go CD is pipeline driven, and the pipeline is the, 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 the main citizen of the whole system. Um, it has really, really powerful templates. And a template is, is simply your, just like in Jenkins, you, 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 you can have a, a, a template for a job. But it's, again, it's a little bit more powerful. It's, it's aware of the whole pipeline. Um, it will not allow you to remove a parameter if that parameter is used somewhere in that pipeline. Not only in that whole small step, but somewhere down the line. Um, um, agent and resources, the same as in Jenkins. You know, you can have your slaves, your agents um, doing stuff. Um, you can group your pipelines. Again, the same as in um, and as in Jenkins. You can have tabs in Jenkins. You can have groups in um, in uh, in GoCD environments. I, you've got you've got labels in um, in 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 Jenkins, but that's that's a little bit more more powerful so you can you can say that for production environment i want those five six ten agents reserved and they will be only used on production um, and then inside those agents i can have labels like php go cd sorry golang um yada yada yada, yada. Um, but it's it's really 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 powerful um, and that's one of the um, screenshots of, again, the API shopper. And you can see that, um, so that's deploy. Um, and the input for the deploy is a Git repo and a build pipeline. That Git repo has a code, the Ansible code to do the releases. Um, and we need the build to get the AMI ID that we've just built. Um, and the, to build a AMI, we need the base image. So base image will be just a plain vanilla OS with the latest security fixes, with whatever base tools that we want to have. Um, and we of course need to, we have to make sure that we've tested that and we know which tag um, it is that we want to build and deploy. Um, which again is, is nothing too special. You know, we can get something similar in Jenkins. 
But the real magic happens if, when you click on that um, 45 uh, link, which will then show you the dependencies of the base image. And then you will see that the base image 45 was used in all those APIs. It's actually deployed on production for API Shopper. Here, it went to staging for those services. It, because the pipeline is the, the, the main citizen of the whole thing, you can view the data from many, many angles. And you can, you can, it, 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 it can quickly give you a simple answer like, is the latest fix for heartbeat, for, sorry, for, heart, for, for the, 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 the heart blade, blade, bleed, is it, is it pushed to production on all the services? And you can say, okay, well, it's only here, here, and here. Let's talk to developers and let's make them push those services as fast as possible to production. Um, and so on and so on. And it's really, really, really powerful. So if, if you're starting again a new project um, and you didn't decide on the tool yet, at least have a look at GoCD. It's free, it's open source, um, it's pretty, um, and it's, when used correctly, it saves you a lot, loads of time. Um, and just to, to sort of give you a perspective on that, um, setting up a new service from scratch takes a round day or two with, with making sure that we've got Ansible playbooks to actually build the AMI. We've got a, a, the whole pipeline through the, through, from development to production and so on and so on. It's the go city part takes maybe 15 minutes, maybe. It's just li literally create new one from template, give it a name, save. New one from template, give it a name, save. You do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, well, ten times, and you've got your pipeline set up, um, and it's and 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 it is ready to go. So bringing new new services on that platform takes literally a day or two, the longest. Um, and I had a chat with, 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 with multiple developers and that's the, that's the thing that, that's, that, that one describes the best um, what continuous delivery should feel like. It should, be, it, it should really be the way developers want it to work for a long, long time. There should be no obstacles, it should be easy, simple, and it just should simply work. And the only way to achieve it is if you A, set up your, con your constraints at the very beginning, make sure that every few weeks you remind yourself about those constraints, make sure you're still going in the right direction, build really solid infrastructure, identical environments, and then build the correct tool, the right tools for your developers and work with your developers. And, and remember that you're just building the tools, you're not doing the continuous delivery. It's the developers, it's the product owners who are pushing the buttons and they, will ha they need to be confident enough to do a rollback themselves if, if they have to. Um, and that's it. Any questions? <laughs> what about this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How to make sure that you 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 keep yourself on track and you keep reminding that um, those um, and, and keep those con constraints in your head. Um, there is no yeah there is no good rule. Um, I think is to me. I've I've just worked too many times with with teams that were almost blinded and just did whatever they want and never ever looked up and say, all oh, right, we, we totally, of course, and we just have to turn left and go that way instead of there. Um, so it's, there is no simple rule. You just have to make sure that every two weeks you say, oh, am I still going in the right direction? Am I still doing the whole thing? Let me just sit down for five minutes in the morning and, or after work and, 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 and think about it. That there is no, no easy way. I mean, you can, you you can set, 
<laughs> no, I mean you can you, you can no, you can set the reminders in your in in your calendar, but it won't work. You will you will dismiss them. Um, so it's you it's it's in your head. You just have to make sure that okay, I it is important, as important as my as as what I do on 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 the daily basis. It should be part of your daily routine. Okay, so the question was yeah, how do you change the team that right now is not in the continuous integration and continuous delivery state? Um, it is doable, but you have to have balls. Simple as that. Like you have to stand your ground, um, and as long as what you're doing is correct, and you know it is correct because you did it so many times and you see it working, uh, you just have to stay persistent and you have to, you know, educate, talk to the people, almost evangelize everyone, saying, if we do it that way. Let me do it that way, and you will see how it works. And and if you if you if you can't, then maybe it's time to to change the job. Or, or I mean, honestly, I mean there was there was there was, there was no point in sort of banging your head um, against the wall. Um, you can try a few times, but yes, yeah, stay your ground. Make sure that 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 whatever you do, you explain why you're doing that, and you lead by example. You can't just you can't just talk the talk. You, no, you, you, it's not talking. Yeah. It's showing. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to. You have to do it yourself. You, ha you have to start with with yourself. So we do. Ansible is <coughs> is not for building um, infrastructure. The whole in infrastructure is in cloud formation, apart from some security groups where we have to dy dy dynamically create the 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 IP addresses. That's that's in Ansible. But other than that, everything is in cloud formation. Everything is split to small services, small stacks. Um, so there is the main rule is one stack, one cloud formation. Simple as that. So you can, and there's no hidden dependencies between b between stacks. We've made one massive mistake. Well, I've made one massive mistake two years back, where we, when I thought it would be a brilliant idea to have a Generic security group defined in one of the one 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 of the cloud formation. A security group is like a firewall thingy, um, and then it then it backfired because we couldn't remove that stack because that security groups that sec that security group was used in every single stack, so we had to literally turn everything down, remove that one stack that we want to remove, and then bring everything back up, uh, which was pretty pretty painful. Um, so the one one thing that I've learned pretty quickly is make sure your your cloud formation stacks are independent, um, which which just then it makes it really really easy to work with. But yeah, everything in cloud formation, everything static in cloud formation. The question was, how do how do we manage, how do we marry rollbacks with data migrations? Um, so developers knows and we've said that to them and we continuously repeat that every month or every six months that your service needs to be backward and forward compatible. So we don't roll back databases. If if we do the release, we do the the part of the release is a database upgrade if there is any. But if that goes wrong, your application needs to be able to work with the future version of the of the DB. Um, and They've learned it the hard way, but now it's fine. Um, so now, now they know that database changes should be incremental. We don't delete, we just add, and so on and so on. Or we delete after two, three releases or, or, or whatever, when we know that we will not roll back that far behind, that, that far back. Um, but yeah, the, the database upgrade, the, the schema upgrades are automatic. Um, hence, the application needs to be able to work with the future version of the day of, 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 of the schema. The question was, how many of these continuous delivery things could be simply lifted and shifted to a different company and, and, um, and it should work uh, pretty much the whole thing? Uh, so there was nothing science specific in that pipeline. Um, and we, we've got our blueprint repo which we then use to, if, if there is a new project, we say, okay, I need one day to set it up. 
and we need a name, we need account approval, and we need, I think that's it, yes, yeah, just account approval. Then we can make a fork of that repo, change a few names, spin it up, and you've got new, new vanilla product, and it can work for any company. The question was what, what platform as a service should I use? Um, IWS. I mean, I mean there, there, is, there, is, there is no single tool that will do it all for you. Um, there are tools for continuous delivery, like GoCD, um, Jenkins, and stuff. Um, but I didn't encounter a single tool that will do the whole thing for you the way you want it. It's, it's always a, 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 a question of how your developers work. Um, is it Linux or is it Windows? Um, what are the business constraints? Can we deploy daily, hourly? Or do we have to go through the whole CAP meetings and explain what, what we are about to, to release ev every <coughs> single week or ev ev every single day? There is no one golden tool that will just do it all. Um, but there are quite, quite a lot of tools that you can use and they work together really, really nice. Like Ansible, IWS, I mean, IWS gives you so many tools. Like, it's, it's not just the compute power. It gives you mobile devices on demand. So you can test your iPhones, iPhone applications or Android application on the physical device somewhere in the cloud. You know, you've got databases, you've got cloud formation, you've got big data stacks, which you can spin up in 15 minutes. Um, so y there is loads, loads of services that you can use and you can, you can just build your infrastructure in, in like a day, maybe two. So I would say uh, IWS and then whatever tools you like. <laughs> the question would be, A, who made a decision on which tool to use and, and why? Yeah, the process. And the process. Why in the process is really so, um, so the first part of it is, it's me. Um, so because I was the first one on the ground on that project, I said, okay, we need to deliver, and we need to deliver fast. We need IWS, obviously. That's the first choice, simple. Second one, we need a configuration tool, configuration management tool that we will be able to hand over to developers at some point. That will not work with Chef, and it, and it will not work with Puppet. I've tried and failed. Um, so I said, right, Ansible is so simple, it's just it's literally a text file. Like, and there are no dependencies, no convoluted logic. It's really, really simple. We'll give it a go and we'll make sure that we use it. And we just, we, we just use Ansible for everything. Um, so that's the process for choosing Ansible. Um, and then Go CD was, I've used it before, not on that scale, uh, but I've used, used it before and I've used Jenkins before. And the, the, the perfect combination that I had in my head was Jenkins doing CI, Go CD doing CD, um, which simply works. Um, so then you, you can, because those two things should be decoupled. N don't try to do CI with CD in the same, on the same, on, with the same tool. Um, different, they are completely different things. Um, and then each team can say, okay, I don't like Jenkins, I want to use Circle CI, or I want to use Travis, or I will want to use that. Fine, I don't care. Just make sure that at the end of the process, your commit has this nightly, this nice little gr green tick, um, so I'm, I'm sure that it's, it's being tested and I can backtrack what tested that commit. Um, um, so yeah, so so reason for GoCD was personal. I think I've I've just made a decision. I I, I, I I had to go with something. I didn't want to go with Jenkins because <coughs> I know it has limitations and it doesn't work well with pipelines. Um, and that was the main reason. I needed something that is built for pipelines. Um, and. And the PHP, Golang, and Python, that's, that's just the development languages. So um, I didn't choose those um, to, 
from my point of view, we can use any language as long as the development team is comfortable with that and, 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 and they can configure it for production. Um, so goes the and then yeah and, yeah, and then I didn't mention the da um, Datadog, but Datadog is does a a a service for for mo for mo monitoring. Pretty simple to install, just works, um, and it's cheap-ish. It's not that cheap, but it's it's it just works. 